Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this video, we will examine the famous fossil, Archaeopteryx, and label the features that unite this important early bird with both dinosaurs and modern birds. Archaeopteryx is one of the most well-known fossil discoveries, and since its discovery in 1861, it has become a pillar in the study of evolution. Every specimen of Archaeopteryx has been found in a single quarry complex in the Solohofen limestone, which is a late Jurassic rock unit in southern Germany. The holotype of Archaeopteryx is an isolated feather discovered in 1861, but two of the most famous specimens of Archaeopteryx were discovered in the late 1800s. The London specimen discovered in 1861 and the Berlin specimen discovered in 1874. Both of these discoveries were important and served a role in the early adoption of the theory of evolution, as advocated by Charles Darwin in 1859, and through new editions of his book on the origin of species. In 1868, Thomas Huxley used the discovery and description of Archaeopteryx as a transitional link between dinosaurs and birds. And over the years, numerous specimens have furthered his initial ideas. Twelve specimens have been recovered from the Solohofen limestones, five of which have been discovered since 1990. Several of these specimens exhibit exquisite feather impressions. Let's look at the anatomy of Archaeopteryx and see why it is a transitional fossil between dinosaurs and birds. Archaeopteryx features six primitive traits that are shared with earlier dinosaurs, like the small theropod dinosaurs from the Mesozoic. The first trait is the presence of thecodont teeth in the jaws. Archaeopteryx lacks a beak or rampothecia, and these teeth resemble a small theropod dinosaur. The second primitive trait is a rather small sternum, which is supported by a rib cage. The sternum lacks any keel or large surface for large flight muscles. The third primitive trait is three long finger digits in the hand with recurved claws. These clawed fingers, again, closely resemble those found in theropod dinosaurs. The fourth primitive trait is a long bony tail. In all living birds, the tail is composed of elongated feathers, and there is no caudal vertebrae in the tail, or a bony tail. Archaeopteryx, like earlier dinosaurs, exhibited a bony tail that may have served a role in muscle attachments for the, the hind leg. The fifth primitive trait can be found in the pelvis, in which the pubis bone projects anteriorly. This clearly shows an affinity with Saurischian dinosaurs, and while the pubis is not as anterior projecting as some theropods, the primitive position of this bone in the skeleton clearly shows an affinity to its theropod ancestry. The last primitive trait is an unfused metatarsal bone. In modern birds, the three metatarsal bones are fused into a single bone, the tarsometatarsalis bone. If you've ever watched a long-legged bird like a flamingo walk, the reason that it looks like the knee is bent backward is because you're actually looking at the joint between the tibia, fibia, and the fused tarsometatarsalis bone in the ankle. Now let's look at derived or new traits found in Archaeopteryx that unite the fossil with living birds. There are five traits that I'll feature. The first trait is all those feathers, and the feathers do not resemble the dinosaur fuzz that we've seen so far. These feathers are held together with barbs and are pinnate forming out of a keratin rhicus and are asymmetrical to facilitate lift and drag for active flight. The brain case is also expanded to accommodate a large brain, and a larger brain was needed to navigate the complex three dimensions required in flight. The halix in the foot is reflected back, which is found in many birds, with the toes mainly supported by the three digits out front. The final new trait is what makes Archaeopteryx the first true bird. There is a groove for the supracorticoideus tendon in the coracoid bone. 
This enabled Archaeopteryx to flap the wings up and down through an expansive range of motions that indicates that it was able to perform powered flight on its own. Earlier, more primitive dinosaurs did not have this extensive range of motion as Archaeopteryx. And while they could fly and glide, they were more limited in the ability to actively flap the wings. Now you should be able to label both the primitive and derived features on the skeleton of Archaeopteryx. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjaminslashberger.org. Links are found in the description below.